people are. Fancy paying 10p to go in there and make yourself look ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. Another thing. Look at the disgusting way you were carrying on on the beach this morning. Ogling that tarty little piece in her bikini. Lustful, that's what you are. You men, you're all alike. If I hadn't been there, you'd probably have ripped the clothes right off her back. <laughs> and don't think I don't know why the landlady keeps slipping you an extra egg at breakfast. <laughs> and another thing. Simple, so look here. I'll load it for you. There you go. Oh, that's where you put the shots, is it? That's right, sir. Now then, you just put this up to your shoulder there. Put your finger on the trigger and aim at the target. It's all ready to fire. All ready, sir. Then well, I'll trouble you with the contents of the tin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce myself. <laughs> I am Zed from Munich. Good morgen, mein Herr. I am B from Bethnal Green. <laughs> you were not followed? I had a tail, but I lost it on the inner circle. CID? Special branch. What happened to my last contact? You mean a Q from Amsterdam? Yes. <laughs> this is a lucrative but dangerous game we are playing, my friends. Poor old Q. Yes, it was the most brutal thing I have ever seen. He died at the hands of a fiend. Oh, my God. Who did it? I did. <laughs> my mob's a hard lot. But you! <laughs> we Germans play for keeps, my friend. Poor old Q. I liked him. He was a real mate of mine, was Q. Yes, and because I am a romantic nature, I have brought you something to remember him by. Oh, thank you very, very much indeed. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that, Zed, very much. Oh, what is it? 
one of his ears. <laughs> And now, my friends, we have been ordered to carry out your operation tomorrow night. <laughs> well, just wanted to make sure the bench wasn't bugged. Tomorrow night, eh? Blimey, that don't give us much time. What's the target? It is a big one. How big? You've heard of the Bank of England? The Bank of England! Try and keep cool, my friend. Keep cool. I don't like it, Zed. I don't like it at all. The Bank of England, ain't they? They've got soldiers there, you know, with dirty great bayonets. I don't want one of them up my... Everything has been thought of. Your rear will be fully protected. Oh, no, it's too dangerous. I won't do it. You imbecile. Do you realise there's 300 million pounds worth of gold in there and it is your job to get it out? It's like a powerhouse. Electric doors, poison gas, machine guns. How am I going to get in there? Go on. There's a small window down the side street. You must climb in there. Well, what's through there, then? Where's it go to? You've heard of the governor of the Bank of England? Yes. It is his private cloakroom. <laughs> well, I can't go in the governor's car, see? <laughs> Suppose he came in a family. What would I say? I feel a fool. Pick up a bucket and mop and say that you hope everything is to his satisfaction. And you might seize the opportunity of asking him the direction to the gold vaults. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm afraid you will, my friend. Not only is it the organization that is concerned, you will also have to account to the Mafia. Oh, my God. You've ruined it all, you blinking foreigners. It's all right before you lot got over here. We used to do a nice, quiet little train robbery, a bit of smash and grab, a little tickle here, a little tickle there. <laughs> so, this is your so-called Dunkirk spirit, huh? <laughs> Must I remind you what happened to your friend Q? Are you rest in peace? He is resting in pieces. <laughs> How would you like one of your ears to be sent back to your wife? <laughs> Go on, cut me. I don't care. Kill me, kill me, cut me. Can't finish with you. You're murdering swine. I don't care Oi. what you do to me any... Oi! You know what the time is? Stretching the old lunch hour a bit, aren't you? Nearly five past two. Is it really, Charlie? <laughs> it's amazing how time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. <laughs> There we are. Hey, oh, oh, I really enjoyed that today, Yeah, Ted. so did I. Yeah, that German's a real swine, isn't he? Yeah, not at all. Hey, that reminds me, I've been the coward for the last five days running. Yeah. About time I was the chief, innit? Yeah, well, fair enough. All right, your turn this time. All right, I'll tell you what, tomorrow, what? I'll be a Chinaman. Head to one of them tongs. Hey, yeah. What's the target? Something special. How about having a go at the crown jewels? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll go for the main glass, don't we? Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm looking for Mrs. Edna Start, Start House. Oh, you found it, love. This is it. Yeah, but that says... I know, malicious neighbours, dear. Oh, they're wicked round here. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, well, thank you. You're not going in there, are you? Oh, yes. Yes, I booked in there for my holiday. Um, bed and breakfast, high tea and a cold sideboard in the evening. But aren't you afraid of breaking the quarantine? Quarantine? Well, I hope you've had your jabs, that's all. Had my what? Your inoculations, I hope you've had them. Oh, 
no, you don't need inoculations just for coming to Yarmouth. <laughs> you do if you're staying in there, dear. <laughs> the sanitary inspector thought he got it beat, but it broke out again last week. <laughs> what did? I never found out, love. It's beating the best. Tell me, are you um, C of E or RC? What's that got to do with it? Well, I mean, I'd like to attend and pay my last respect, seeing as it's only next door. You don't mean... Oh, they're dropping like flies, dear. <laughs> the ambulances are running a convoy system. But, I mean, it's only a little house. How many came out of oh, there? dozens. Black, white, yellow, you name it, she's got one. <laughs> I can't understand how she manages to fit them all in. Oh, no, dear. They don't sleep on beds, they sleep on shelves. <laughs> but look here in her advert, it says... You will be treated like one of the family. Yes, I know. What she means is, if she takes a liking to, she, you can sleep between her and her mum, you see. Oh. Mm, after seeing her mum, you'll plead for a shelf, love. I don't like sleeping with anybody. In that case, you better watch out for her brother. What do you mean? Oh, sometimes he slips his chains and slithers down from the attic. Slip? What does he look like? Well, I don't like to speak of the near-dead, dear, but... <laughs> he went swimming once and a fisherman caught him off the pier and got first prize in the conger eel class. <laughs> oh, do you know? You're beginning to put me off. Oh, I don't want to do that, dear. I mean, after all, you are up here to enjoy yourself, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I suppose it can't be all bad. What's her food like? Oh, it's all right if you don't swallow, dear. <laughs> Making her out to sound like a monster. Oh, am I really? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I mean, she's all right as long as you get used to her funny little ways. What funny little ways? Well, I mean, if you have a bath, keep your clothes on, otherwise you'll nick them. <laughs> <laughs> and don't leave your mouth open like that, love. She have your gold fillings out before you can cough. No, I haven't got any gold fillings. She's not fussy. <laughs> oh, well, that does it, then. I'm not going to spend my holiday in that chamber of horrors. I'll say as I blame you, dear. Um... I, sp I suppose you wouldn't have any vacancies, would you? Now, there's a thing. Do you know, I do happen to have a cancellation. Oh, well, what a bit of luck. Yes, it's only because a certain famous Welsh actor went back to his wife at the last moment. <laughs> oh. oh, I just thought. Yes? I sent her a deposit. Oh, you'll never get it back, do you? Oh, now, I'll tell you what, though. She's got some lovely flowers in her front garden. Nice, aren't they? Aren't they nice? Oh, no, I, I couldn't. Go on, tit for tat. All right, I will. I will. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh. I've just gotten off an oil rig out there and I'm looking for a room for a few days. Now, uh, you wouldn't have anything, would you? I'd be willing to pay whatever you ask. Well, now, there's a bit of luck. <laughs> I'm just about to have a cancellation. <laughs> Come in, won't you? Why, thank you, ma'am. Oh, you are a big boy, aren't you? <laughs> I hope you're the type that likes your breakfast in bed. <laughs> Why, you! What on earth do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, well, you see, she I mean, I sent you a deposit. Oh, damn soul. I should ring for the police, dear. About time we stopped these vandals from London. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, sir. Pint a bit on a pork pie. At 37 pence, please. If that pitiful display is the best they can put on against us, it ain't worth us coming over no more. Oh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, Horace. Come on. Every time Tomo got the ball, those English batsmen were practically digging slit trenches. Well, I reckon that Greggy did pretty well, you know. Greggy's a South African, not a flaming pom. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to face up to it. They're nothing but a bunch of bludgers. Gentlemen. 
A uh, couple of tubes of lager, please, landlord. Right. So, what you're saying is that the old Poms had the grand order of the raw prawn, eh? No, not exactly. <laughs> what I'm saying is they're a bunch of snivelling, yellow-bellied galahs. <laughs> no, 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 I can't believe it. All right, all right. Now, take this specimen here. Now, that's your typical British, all right? And that's his beer. Watch this. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Same again, sir. Beautiful, isn't it? Who would have believed that the British bulldog had been reduced to the state of a lousy chihuahua? Yeah. That'll be 60p, please. All right, your shout. You know, I'm still not convinced. After all, we come from these people. They're our ancestors. We come from them like man comes from the ape. All right, I'll give you more proof. You feel hungry? Have a piece of his pie. <laughs> How about that? No reaction at all. There we are. You know, there must be something that'll break through that uh, British reserve. That's not reserve. It's ruddy cowardice. Look, will you believe me if I subject him to one final piece of humiliation without getting the mouth full of knuckles? Yeah, <laughs> give it a burn. <laughs> now you got a yellow streak a yard wide. Gutless. Totally gutless. And listening to all that, you ought to be ashamed letting a couple of us talk to you like that. Why don't you speak up for yourself? I was trying to tell him. I'm a flaming Aussie myself. <laughs> Mummy waiting. You're beginning to get in the way of the housework. <laughs> well, it won't be long now, love. No point in getting impatient. There now, Dobbin. <laughs> You're beginning to look like your old self again. <laughs> Fancy that little horse being up in the loft all this time. Yeah. I must have forgotten all about it. So had I. I only come across it when I went up there looking for that German Elbin I captured during the First World War. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> I've told you before, I'm not having that German helmet hanging up outside the front door with geraniums growing in it. <laughs> well, you must stop hating the Germans. We're in the common market now. Yes, dirty hun. <laughs> Funny when you think, isn't it? Your little backside was on there when you were a young'un. <laughs> and now my grandson's going to be riding about <clears> on it. <laughs> oh, sorry, love, yes. Grandchild, I should have said. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's all right. I mean, that old thing won't give the baby woodworm, will it? <laughs> I don't think there's much chance, my love. After all, you are having a nip and not a sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dad. Get that old horse put away before Letty arrives. I don't want her to see the place looking like a pigsty. Uh, I don't want to see her at all, miserable bag. <laughs> <laughs> that she may be, but she's still Ernie's sister. Uh, what's, she, uh, what's she coming here for, anyway? She wrote to say she'd like to visit us before I went in to have the baby. Yes, well, I don't like her. She's so flaming morbid. She collects funerals like other people collect fag coupons. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. To my solemn knowledge, she's had a, a wreath of flowers made up in plastic. Plastic yeah. flowers? Don't be ridiculous. How'd you know? I've seen her nick it back four times. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Yes, and very hygienic, though. She bangs it in the washing machine, ready for the next one. <laughs> Dad, you're making it all up. Oh, I know. But there's nothing I enjoy as much as a good hate. Yes, I'm well aware of that. But let me advise you to guard your tongue for the next couple of hours. After all, she is a Lloyd and a member of the family. Yes, well, the less I have to do with the Lloyds, the better I like it. Well, you're not forgetting that Ernie's a Lloyd. That's what I mean. If you hadn't had so much to do with one, you wouldn't be in the condition you're in today. Still, we're home. I'll get the tea. Yeah, sure. Here you go, Letty. Hello, James. Still in the land of the living, I see. <laughs> yes, love. 
and I wish I could say the same about you. <laughs> Dad, we ain't gonna have any trouble, are we? Of course not, Ernie, no. Good. Hello, Letty. How lovely to see you. Hello, Lily. Well, it's been simply ages, hasn't it? Yes, the last time was about two years ago at Auntie Blanche's funeral. <laughs> you haven't had time to change your clothes since then. <laughs> I've got you some flowers. Oh, thank you, dear. Aren't they lovely? Oh, I've seen these before somewhere. <laughs> Go and put them in water, please. Oh, yes, as I thought. With deepest sympathy from all the lads at British Rail. <laughs> it's all right, all right. I'm only trying to cheer things up, that's all. Well, make yourself at home, Letty. I expect you're ready for a nice cup of tea. Yeah, darling, I'll... Uh... I'll take your coat, Oh, I? no, I'll leave it on, thank you, Ernie. I don't want to get a draught on my chest. What, are you frightened of something blowing off, are you? <laughs> Come and sit here, Letty. I'll bet you a pound you can't keep that ruddy great mouth of yours shut till my sister's gone home. Make it a fiver. A fiver? <laughs> oh. Now, now, you two. Uh -huh. Well... Well, Letty. What do you think about our Lil, eh? What do you think? And she a picture of blooming elf? Poor soul. Eh? <laughs> hey? Fancy falling for a baby at her time of life. <laughs> she has my sympathy. Yes, I can do without it, thank you. Yes, what do you know about being in the club? <laughs> you were never married, as far as I know. Oh, no. I always thought it was rather rude. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't exactly uh, Letty's fault she had a... Had an experience, didn't you, love? I did. An experience. During the war. It was on Euston Station. <laughs> in the blackout. <laughs> Pitch dark it was. Looking for the ladies, weren't you, love? Yes. So I followed this woman in a plaid skirt. <laughs> Turned out to be a Gordon Islander. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was on 14 days leave. It was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yes, the wash and brush up's not much good for honeymoon, is it, really? <laughs> Anyone for a piece of cake? Oh, no. You know me and cake, dear. Well, a piece of bread and butter, then. Oh, no, I'm trying to avoid starch. Uh, shall I dip my fingers in the fish paste and wave them at you, then? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Dad. Stop taking well, that. Well, you must have something. How about a crumpet? No, she hasn't got over used to station yet. <laughs> So you're going into hospital to have it then, Lil? Yes. It is best with the first baby. Oh, you wouldn't catch me going into one of those places. Now, for once, I agree with you. Why she can't have it at home, I don't know. It was good enough for her mother. A terrible thing happened to a neighbour of mine, Mrs Freebody. You remember her, Ernie? Yes, yes. Well, she went into hospital to have hers. And do you know, when that child was put by her bedside, it was as black as the ace of spades. <laughs> there you are. What did I tell you? Well, it's not really surprising, is it? She was married to a ruddy great West Indian. <laughs> yes, but he's been over here for years. <laughs> Silly cow. <laughs> what are you hoping for, Lil? A girl or a boy? A boy. A boy. Uh, uh, that is, if it doesn't turn out to be a girl. <laughs> that's right. That's that's right. Yeah. We don't care what it is, as long as it's all there and everything in the right place. Uh -huh. Only if it does turn out to be a boy, I've got some good news for you. Oh, what do you mean? Well, there was an advert in last week's Women's Gazette about the Fulham Palace Road College of Heralds. Oh. What do they do when they're at home? Well, they look in their books and tell you about your family and where they came from. Your lot never came from anywhere. They escaped. <laughs> well, it might surprise you to know that, according to them, the Lloyds are related to the Prince of Wales. <laughs> what are you talking about? It all happened in 987 when Dafford Ap Lloyd, Prince of Landudno, married Matilda of Clan Fair, Paul Gwyneth, Gorgareth, Quinn Ford, Clanty Cilio, Go, 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 Go. <laughs> Also known as Matilda Conway. Let's have a look at that. 
load of old cod's wallet. Well, it can't be. I paid seven pounds fifty for it. <laughs> Look, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people called Lloyd. How do you know this bunch of taffies got anything to do with us? Exactly. It's amazing how gullible people are today. I mean, you've only got to look at his mush to see there's no blue blood in his veins. It's just as well it's a load of nonsense. I don't want my grandson turning out to be a toffee-nosed, stuck-up little sprig of the aristocracy <laughs> with nothing but a load of layabouts. That's just the sort of statement I'd, I'd expect from someone like you. You're a, you're, a, you're a peasant, mate, that's what you are. You're nothing more than a peasant. You're a, you're a, you're a serf. Do you know, it was people like you who used to come creeping into the castles owned by my ancestors so that they'd do a bit of forelock touching, mate. You're a churl. That's what you are, mate, a churl. Oh, <laughs> a flaming aristocrat all of a sudden, are we? <laughs> I can see the greed in your eyes. You're just afraid my son, a Lloyd, might grow up to have a little bit of noble blood inside him, aren't you? You're jealous, mate. Jealous, jealous, jealous! Let me tell you, you jumped up Lord of the Manor. Us Lampwicks are the sort of people that make this country great. Dad? Yeoman stock. Salt of the earth. We're proud of our working class energies. There's no taking Dad. the aristocracy about us, I'll tell you. Dad! And that's, yes. Will you listen to what? me? I think you ought to see this. I sent off to that College of Heralds as well. And according to them, the Lampwicks are directly descended from Mary, Queen of Scots. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary. Now, where are you going? I'm going down to Spread Eagle to make a phone call. Who to? Buckingham Palace. <laughs> oh. Guess who my grandson's going to have as a godmum? 